Hi, my name's Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Gates of Mara, designed by J.B. Howell and published by WizKids, who sponsored this video. Gates of Mara is a 2-4 player game in which each player controls a tribe, seizing the opportunity to enter the realms of the Elemental Lords, seeking their blessing and their mercy. Your goal is to secure influence in each realm, enchant your tribe, collect elemental resources and earn gate keys. At the end of the game, the player with the most points is declared the winner. They earn 100 years of peace and prosperity until the Gates of Mara open again. Place the central gate in the middle of the play area and place one key on it. Take the grey Chaos Realm board and place it near the central gate. Randomly choose a number of other realm boards equal to the number of players and place them around the central gate like this. Ensure that each realm is showing the side for the correct number of players. Place one standard gate between each realm board. Place the Wanderer figure into the indent above the Chaos Realm's influence track. The game comes with four Elemental Lord figures. Choose two of them to use in your game, either randomly or decide which ones you want to use. Return the unused figures to the box. Place one of them above the first realm board clockwise from the Chaos Realm, and the other in the next realm clockwise. Place the enchantment board to one side. Shuffle the banner cards and place them face down in a deck near the enchantment board. Do not include the fire banners. Deal one banner card face up to each of the slots at the bottom of each realm board, except for the Chaos Realm, which has no such slots. Place the hourglass on space one of the round track on the enchantment board. Shuffle the Wanderer cards and place them face down next to the enchantment board. Reveal the top card and place it on the marked space here. Shuffle the enchantment cards and place them face down in a deck nearby. Take the top six cards from this deck and place them face up into the enchantment board slots like this. Shuffle the objective cards and place them face down nearby. Place the top two of them face up on the spaces of the enchantment board here. Place the four types of element gems, the onyx nuggets, the keys and the points tokens to one side of the play area. If the Fire Lord is in the game, there are two additional steps to perform. Set the Fire Lord influence marker at 4 in the realm where the Fire Lord is, and place the Fire Banners near the other cards. These are all identical, so there's no need to shuffle them, and you can keep them face up. Each player then performs some additional setup steps for themselves. Each player gets a tribe at random, and takes the player board, figures, claims, caravans, influence markers, and turn order marker in their colour. Also take a resource board and an energy marker, which is placed above your player board with the energy marker on space 11 of your energy track. Place your seven figures on the corresponding spaces, indicated by image and base shape. The figures are two merchants, one specialist, one leader, one champion and two enchanters. Place your claims in either of the resource storage ovals. Place your caravans in the designated spaces here. Place one of each type of element gem in your other resource oval. Note that the Onyx Nuggets are not element gems. On each of the realm boards, all players place one of their influence markers on the zero space of the influence track. Randomise the turn order markers for all of the players and place them on the turn order track starting at slot 1 and proceeding down until all markers have been placed. This determines the playing order for the first round. Gates of Mara is played over four rounds, during which players take it in turns to place one of their figures from their tribe onto either a realm space or the enchantment board, and then activate a number of different abilities. Each time you place a figure in a realm, you will gain influence in that realm, and at the end of that round, the players with the most influence there stake a claim. When a figure is placed, you can activate the ability of the space they are on, any abilities of the figure themselves, along with any banners or enchantments they have. And you can also activate the ability of the Elemental Lord or the Wanderer if they are present in the realm where you place a figure. Placing a figure costs a certain amount of energy, and you can spend more energy in activating some of the abilities. When you are out of energy, you must pass, and when all players have passed, the round comes to an end. The players with the most influence in each realm stake their claim to it. Keys can be collected and objectives fulfilled. And then the game is set up for the next round. After four rounds of play, the scores are added up and the player with the most claims in a realm will get bonus points as well as the players with the most keys. And the player with the most points wins the game. In each round, starting with the first player on the turn order track, each player takes a turn. On your turn, you may choose to play or pass. Passing is easy to explain, so I'll explain that first. When you pass, you are out for the round and take no further turns. 
If you have no energy left, you must pass. But you can also pass before you have used all of your energy, and there is an advantage to doing that, which I'll explain later on. If you play, choose a figure from your player board and place it onto an unoccupied space of either a realm board or the enchantment board or one of the gates, subject to the following placement restrictions. Merchants and specialists have circular bases, and they can only be placed for one energy on the realm boards. This can be seen by the circular outline here. Enchanters have hexagonal bases, and they can be placed for two energy only on the enchantment board. Champions have square bases and may be placed for two energy on either a realm board or one of the standard gates. And leaders have triangular bases. They can be placed for three energy on realm boards, standard gates or the central gate. If you place your leader on the central gate, take all of the keys that are there and place them next to your player board. After placing a figure on a realm board, you gain influence in that realm. One for a merchant or specialist, two for a champion and three for a leader. If you place a figure on a standard gate, you gain influence in the two adjacent realms, one in each for a champion and two in each for a leader. And if you place your leader on the central gate, you gain one influence in every realm. The influence you get for placing a figure is summarized on your player board. Influence will be used at the end of the round to determine which players get to stake a claim to the realm, and then influence will be reset to zero. After placing a figure, you then have the option of activating one or more abilities. The space where you place the figure has an ability. The Elemental Lords and the Wanderer also have abilities. And the figure itself also has an innate ability, including any abilities granted by enchantments or banners that that figure currently has. You can activate as many of these abilities as you want to, if eligible to do so, and in any order. The first type of ability I will explain is the figure's own innate ability. The merchants and enchanters are super easy to explain because they don't have an innate ability. The leader allows you to convert any three elemental gems in any combination for an onyx nugget. These nuggets can be used during the game to buy powerful enchantments, but are also worth points at the end of the game. The champion's ability allows you to spend one energy to place one of your caravans onto an unoccupied caravan space in one realm where the champion is currently influencing and immediately gain the benefit of that space. And I use the word here influencing specifically rather than saying the realm where the champion is in because if the champion is on a standard gate they are influencing both adjacent realms. Therefore the caravan can be placed in either of them. The benefits of the caravan spaces are fairly easy to understand and the iconography is all explained in the rulebook. The abilities of the specialist vary from one tribe to the next. The Antid specialist allows you to spend two energy to gain two additional influence on the specialist's current realm board. The Dragonkin Specialist allows you to spend an additional 2 energy when placing the figure for a total of 3 energy to place it on a space already occupied by another figure, and then gain 1 additional influence in that realm. The Elf Specialist allows you to spend 2 energy to gain 1 influence in the current realm and place 1 caravan on an unoccupied caravan space in that realm. And the Goblin Specialist allows you to spend 2 energy to gain 1 influence in the Specialist's current realm and gain 1 element gem of any type and also activate the Wanderer, which I'll explain soon. Next it's time to explain the abilities of the four elemental lords. For the purposes of these, when I use the phrase in a realm, having your leader or champion on an adjacent gate also counts. For the water lord, any time you gain influence in the water lord's realm, you can choose to gain points instead. So here, if you place your champion on this gate, you would gain one influence in this realm. However, because the water lord is present, you can choose to gain a point instead. Also, when you place any figure in the realm occupied by the Waterlord, you may activate the Wanderer, which, as I've just mentioned, I will explain soon. When you place a figure in the realm occupied by the Air Lord, you gain one element gem of any type. The Earth Lord is a bit different. It gives you one influence in its realm whenever you place a caravan in its realm, however you manage to place that caravan. And the Fire Lord is another exception. It has no ability but instead, the Fire Lord has four influence in its current realm and it competes with the players for influence in that realm. Next up is to talk about the Wanderer. An important thing to remember about the Wanderer is that it's not considered to be an elemental lord. When you place any figure in the realm occupied by the Wanderer, you may perform one exchange displayed on the current Wanderer card. For example, here you could spend two water gems to gain any two element gems and one point. Or you could gain one onyx nugget or one key. I'll now talk about the abilities on the spaces of the realm boards themselves. These abilities may have an activation cost in element gems or energy. 
You may activate each ability once and only if you can pay the activation cost, if there is one. Here, for example, you can spend one energy to gain either three fire gems or two earth gems. Many realm spaces allow you to spend one energy to take the banner card from that space. After taking the banner, you attach it to any figure on your player board by placing it below the figure's home space slot. The banner icons on your player board show you how many banners each figure can have. Merchants and champions may have up to two banners, specialists and leaders may have up to one banner, and enchanters may not have any banners. Once a figure has a banner, they can activate the ability of that banner each time the figure is placed. You can attach a banner to a figure that you've already placed this round, but then you won't get to activate that banner until the next round. Do not refill the empty banner space yet, that will happen at the end of the round. The final types of abilities to explain are enchantments, which are gained from the enchantment board. Only enchanters can be placed on the enchantment board, and enchanters cannot be placed anywhere else. When you place an enchanter on this board, place it on the leftmost unoccupied space. And notice that if you're playing with fewer than four players, not all of the spaces are available. After placing your enchanter, you may buy up to two of the available enchantment cards. To buy an enchantment card, first pay the cost shown in the top left of the card. Then immediately gain the points shown in the top right of the card, which is based on the current round number. So here, for example, if this was the first round of the game, you would gain six points for buying this enchantment. Then you add the card to one of your figures whose base is the shape matching one of the icons in the top right of the card. This one, for example, can be attached to a merchant, specialist or champion. Similar to the banners, once the enchantment card is attached to a figure, you may activate that card whenever the figure is placed. And again, if you attach it to a figure that you've already placed this round, you cannot use the ability on the enchantment until you place it in a future round. Banners and enchantments are both considered types of attachments, and each figure can have a maximum of three attachments in some combination of banners and enchantments. For example, the merchants can have up to two banners, but there's nothing to stop them from having three enchantments and no banners. After you have purchased one or two enchantments, refill any empty slots with new enchantment cards drawn from the deck. After all players have passed, the round comes to an end, and it's important to understand these next steps because they will influence everything that you've done up to this point. First, check the amount of influence in each of the realms. The player with the most influence places two claims in that realm, and the player with the second most influence places one claim in that realm. If there's a tie for the most influence, the tied players place one claim each and there is no second place awarded. If there is a tie for the second most influence when there's already a single player with the most influence, then the tied players each gain two points but place no claim. Note that you cannot gain any reward if you have no influence in the realm. In the realm of the Fire Lord, unless your influence equals or exceeds the Fire Lord's four influence, you cannot place claims in the Fire Lord's current realm, nor can you earn points for a second place tie. Here, for example, the Antids have the most influence and have at least as much as the Fire Lord, so they place two claims. The Dragonkin are second with three influence, but because this is not as much as the Fire Lord, they get no benefit. If you are able to place a claim on the Fire Lord's current realm, you can acquire a Fire Banner and attach it to a figure with an available banner slot. These banners are activated in the same way as other banners. The next thing to check is which players are eligible for gaining keys. If you have any combination of three or more figures and or caravans on or adjacent to a realm board with an elemental lord, you gain one key. And since there are only two elemental lords, you can gain a maximum of two keys this way each round. Here, for example, this realm has the fire lord in it. The antids have two figures and one caravan on the board, so they gain one key. The goblins have one figure on the board, their champion on an adjacent gate, and their leader on the central gate, so they gain one key too. Then check the objectives. You gain four points for each objective you completed this round. These objectives are all listed on the back page of the rulebook if you want to see ahead of time what the possibilities are. After all of the end of round steps, it's time to reset things ready for the next round. Unless this was round four, in which case proceed directly to final scoring. First, update the turn order. The player with the most remaining energy is the first player and places their marker at the top of the track. Similarly, the players with the second, third and fourth most remaining energy take those positions in turn order. You see, I told you that not using all of your energy could be useful. 
If players are tied for the least energy, the player with the enchanter closest to the arrow on the enchantment board goes earlier in turn order. And if still tied, because none of the tied players placed a figure on the enchantment board, then turn order between the tied players stays the same. Then return all players' figures and caravans to their home spaces on the player boards. In each realm, reset all players' influence markers to their starting positions. Leave any claims in place until the end of the game. Refill any empty banner slot on the realm boards with new blue banner cards drawn from the deck. Start from the Chaos Realm board and go clockwise. If you run out of banners, leave any remaining slots empty. Then place one key on the central gate, adding it to any keys already there. Discard the current Wanderer card to the bottom of the deck, and then reveal a new Wanderer card and place it here. Discard the current objective cards to the bottom of their deck, and deal two new objectives here. Reset all players' energy markers back to 11. Remove the Elemental Lords from the Realm Boards and then move the Wanderer one space clockwise to the next realm. The new first player chooses one of the Elemental Lords and places it above any Realm Board other than the Chaos Realm. And then the new second player places the other Elemental Lord above a different Realm Board than the first one and other than the Chaos Realm. An Elemental Lord can share a Realm with the Wanderer. You can also return an Elemental Lord to the Realm Board that it was previously on. You are not required to move it to a new Realm. If you're playing with the Fire Lord, set its influence to 4 in its current realm. And finally, advance the Hourglass to the next space. The game ends after 4 rounds. At this point, players gain additional points from Claims, Keys, Element Gems and Onyx Nuggets. First, check each realm separately. The player with the most Claims in the realm gains 20 points. The player with the second most in the realm gains 10 points. If there is a tie for the most, each tied player gains 10 points and there is no second place. If there is a tie for second place when a single player gained 20 points, then each player tied for second place gets 5 points. You must have one claim in the realm to gain any points this way. Then each player counts how many keys they have. The player with the most keys gains 20 points and the player with the second most keys gains 10 points. Use the same tiebreak system as when counting claims. You then gain 1 point for every 2 element gems you have left, and you gain 3 points for each onyx nugget you have. The player with the most points wins the game. In case of a tie, there are 5 tiebreak rules shown in the rulebook. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to play Gates of Mara. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment if you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions about the game, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you to WizKids for sponsoring this video, and to all of my patron supporters who help fund the channel. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.